to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Appreciate everyone. Let's pray. Father, help us. We have come to learn. We have come to see. In the name of Jesus, open our eyes. Open our eyes that you will take us further. You will increase us. The Bible says a man of understanding will increase in knowledge. I pray in the name of Jesus that for many of us it will be a new milestone. By the power of the Holy Spirit, to you be all the glory in Jesus' name. Please be seated. Good morning again. It is it is a privilege and an honor to share especially among leaders i love teaching leaders for many reasons among them number one is that when you are able to transform one leader every leader is a representation of at least a number of people so instead of the labor of trying to talk to 10 people 100 people a thousand ten thousand if you can speak to the person who influences them and he gets it right you have been able to capture a people leadership is very important the bible says strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter hallelujah and like um, pastor rightly observed when we teach the secrets or the mysteries of the kingdom these are the inner working systems that control the results that we celebrate it's important to not only celebrate results but to understand what is happening at the back end what makes these things work what makes your spiritual life thrive what makes your finances what sustains and multiplies your influence what gives you rest in the midst of all the things that you know seem to give on rest and um, the Word of God comes the reason why the Word of God is called light is because it sustains within itself the power to drive darkness John 1 5 and the light shineth in darkness it says and the darkness comprehended it not hallelujah so teachings like this are a feast of light where God serves us light and opens our eyes even if your eye is working well and there is no light you still will not be able to see properly so it's not just the health of your eyes alone it is the health of your eyes in partnership with the presence of light that equals sight you can have a healthy eyes and complete darkness and it will be equal to blindness even though your eye is fine so don't just rejoice that you can see simply because your eye is fine it is your eyes in partnership with light that equals to sight hallelujah i sang a song yesterday let me sing it again don't sing just listen it's a very simple but very powerful song um i'm not a musician i don't sing special numbers i sing songs as they respond to the things that the lord is doing in my spirit and i believe this is what god is doing in this season with the church what God is doing in my life and what God is doing in the life of any and everyone who truly takes him serious. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to your work in me till Christ is formed in me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. 
So I submit to your work in me Till Christ is formed in me No eye has seen Nor ear has heard What God has in store for me So I submit to your work in me Till Christ may form in me Can I tell you something? Just because God said it will happen does not guarantee that it will happen. There are many things in the Bible God said would happen that did not happen. Because the manifestation of the prophetic speakings of God depends on a response from the potential recipient. There is always something on your own path and on your own end that activates the word of God the same way I said it is the union of a healthy eye and the presence of light that produces sight there is also the union of the prophetic speaking of God and a willing heart that is both willing and obedient it is to the wooden that the potential to eat the good of the land resides are we together so just because you heard that God said you are this and that does not guarantee that it will happen my prayer this morning is that for everything we'll be receiving that God will grant us the heart to not only receive but to put it to practice and that it will work for us in the name of Jesus it is dangerous to have results that you do not understand the dynamics of its whereabout in as much as yesterday I taught you that there is a God dimension to our results we owe ourselves the responsibility to understand the other part of the result that has the dynamics that is explainable it is never all up to God and it is never all up to us hallelujah praise the name of the Lord I like to study the truths and the principles that produce results not just to celebrate results when you celebrate what you do not understand you will fear your success because you know it will not last and you're right it will not last anything sustainable is sustained by light understanding illumination you can have short-term success by luck but you cannot have sustainable success by luck he says he that strives for mastery is not crowned except and unless he strives lawfully praise the name of the lord is it all right if we take five minutes to pray in the spirit do you love to pray yes when we pray it is not a religious ritual we are giving the holy spirit room to find expression through our spirits through our minds so that we can hear him so that we can align to what he wants us to do the primary assignment of prayer in my opinion is found in luke chapter 9 and verse 29 the bible says and as he prayed the he being jesus he says the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glistering that means when we pray there is transformation that happens within us hallelujah prayer affords you the opportunity and provides the potential for growth spiritual growth a heightened level of sensitivity growth in your discernment so as you pray in the spirit see it as part of the meeting we are leaders he spoke a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint low 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 like a mighty wind spirit of victory cover us with your wings will you blow 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 like a mighty wind spirit of victory cover us with your wings from the pages of my heart let my worship begin that never ends it's from the pages of my heart let my worship begin that never ends to the god 
people the power of God is coming on them right now as I speak and for that person the prophetic word for you is it's a new season you are stepping into a very defining moment in your spiritual experience tonight is a miracle service but it's, it's very important you are a leader for someone god is saying i should tell you return back to the place of the altar return back to the place of the altar you have left your secret place the lord is bringing you a word your victory was because of the power and the strength of your altar avoid distraction you will not get it that way god is speaking to someone return back to the place of the altar return back to the place of the altar return back to the place of the altar cut away distractions in your life your life is too busy and you are not achieving anything return back to the place of the altar one encounter with the god of the bible in the place of the altar can define the next 10 20 years of your life In Jesus name we pray please be seated let's see how far God is able to help us this morning I want you to be very sensitive because when we are in the presence of God like this the Holy Spirit is also doing things in the life of people while the Word of God is coming is more than a lecture you are receiving the ministry of the Spirit is the kind of ministry where the influence of the holy spirit comes upon the words and the speakings of god's people this is the difference between just a mere communication or a lecture and the ministry of the spirit I'm talking to leaders so expect a lot of impartations while we speak hallelujah the movement of the Holy Spirit while we speak is not just about being anointed. It is an attestation to the fact that what you are hearing is not just sound coming to your ears. That beyond the realm of your hearing, something is entering your spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. In this kingdom or in life, there are two ways to approach the matters of life and destiny. I want you to listen carefully. 
there are two ways to approach the matters of life and destiny there are three people now who will start running under the anointing just hold them you don't have to bring them out just hold them and just keep them calm it's just the activity of the holy spirit in their life god is building them it's a grace i just saw a door open in the spirit and i saw three people like that grace for speed coming upon them who have the time to do the impartation but right now three of them the light help them please hallelujah praise god just help them when someone is under the anointing close to you you help them that is one three of them i saw in my vision i mean the season is coming to an end that door has been opened a door stands for access 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 in the spirit access is is a grace for speed that takes people beyond because one of the ways that we redeem time in the spirit one of the ways that we redeem time is for god to give us speed speed even by the spirit of god hallelujah so as these words come once i just interject it shouldn't distract us we're teaching the word but then we must allow the holy spirit this is what this is what we came to experience it's more than a lecture you are immersed in the ministry of the spirit the ministry of the spirit is beyond just a mere communication where you say yes i agree there is a spiritual activity that is happening to you I am under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. I am under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. Here's the part of the song I love. I am victorious. I have overcome. I am victorious. I have. Hallelujah. Who is Chidi? hearing the name Chidi like C-H-I-D-I someone that should be a male name am I right Chidi there is a Chidi that God is no no you don't have to come out don't worry we would have that time in night I just felt like sometimes you see God does not distract us like this just because um, this is not about there's, there's something that you are learning when you see these things you have to discern what God is doing it tells you how how determined God is to see that you find rest and you experience him hallelujah the Lord is bringing captivity the family of Chidi Chidi this name I'm seeing the Lord is bringing rest roundabout freedom from there's there's a unique expression of demonic assaults in that family this gentleman don't miss the service tonight this one looking at me wearing glasses this one my friend god will begin a walk in your life from this meeting but this night service is for you come with your heart opened because God has a great assignment for you. Very, very great assignment for you. In the name of Jesus. Great assignment for you. Somebody will begin to laugh now by the Spirit. No, 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 no. This is not something mechanical. Laughing by the Spirit. The Bible says the shouts of joy and victory shall not depart from the tent of the righteous. 
this is not some super how does someone come to church discipline and organize and just because a man is speaking you now start laughing you're not acting that laughter you see is not a mechanical thing that laughter you see is a token of victory in the spirit that something has been established in the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ laughter can you imagine that that someone begins to laugh just by the spirit remember this used to happen in Kenneth Hagin's meetings and ignorant people just kept criticizing <laughs> so let's 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 get to our discussion we're talking with leaders there are two ways to approach the matters of life and destiny and I want you to please pay attention number one you can approach life and destiny sensually just using brain work logic and guesswork largely whether it is leadership or your sojourn as far as purpose and destiny is concerned you can choose to lean entirely on the realm of logic the realm of common sense and the realm of trial and error you can experiment your way through life in hope that you are right or number two the second option which is the more superior is that you can walk the path of the spiritual man there is the approach of the natural man one who is largely driven by experiment driven by senses trial and error but there is the path of a spiritual man and god is generous enough to present both options to you when you begin your work that means it is it is within your power to choose that i want to live my life naturally sensually by experimentation and god will honor that decision or you can choose that I want to follow the path of a spiritual man. A spiritual man is not a pastor. A spiritual man is not a preacher. A spiritual man is one who has chosen as an act of your will to submit to the word and to submit to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. These are the provisions that turn ordinary men to become spiritual. You are not spiritual just because you are praying in tongues. No. You are spiritual to the degree to which your life leans wholly on the authority of scripture and the ministry, the supremacy of the Holy Spirit. That means the Holy Spirit is not an opinion you consult when you are confused. He literally becomes the life force. The, your intelligence is derived from your interaction with scripture and your interaction with the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So when people tell you they are spiritual, it is not by carrying a, a form or regalia of religion. No, if you say you are spiritual, I have to test your loyalty to the supremacy of the word of God as against your mind, your feelings, your opinions or status quo. And then I also have to test your honor to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. If I find you wanting in these two dimensions, you are not spiritual. It's as simple as that. Are we together? I just defined for you what the Bible calls a spiritual man. A spiritual man is not just one who prays in tongues. A spiritual man is not just one who is in church all the time. A spiritual man is not just one who cries when they raise a song of worship. Mm -mm, mm -mm. True spirituality is measured by the depth of your resoluteness to submit to the supremacy of the word of God. Are we together now? That the word of God and the ministry of the Holy Spirit become the principal influencers of your thinking, your behavior, your character, and then your destiny. No matter how popular, no matter how convenient it is, if it is inconsistent with the word of God and it's not based on the prompting and the allowance that the spirit of grace gives you, you will restrict yourself. The assignment of your will in this sense now becomes to move in the direction of the word of God and the voice of the spirit or otherwise. That is the path of a spiritual man. And I can tell you, many people are not spiritual. 
It's not an insult. There is selective or conditional spirituality. That means it will now look like you are obedient. Now, spirituality must be absolute. It does not matter whether it seems to work well in my favor or not. I trust the intelligence of the spirit. I trust the intelligence of the word of God. This is why the word of God, the Bible is a compendium of God's dealings with people through time. And he allowed us to vet his integrity without hiding anything so that we can come to the conclusion that he is dependable. That even when we do not understand him, we can trust him. Wanting to understand God before you follow him is the recipe for disaster. Because in the dealings of God with men, there are many dimensions of his dealings that it will take years for you to understand what God was doing. You will need to start the journey. It is five years into the journey to begin to make sense. So when you become scientific and calculative in your approach, you will not only slow down your pace, you will most likely not be able to work with God. You ask anybody who God is using today, they will tell you for a major part of their journey, they were just moving blindly. Where are you going to? I just know he said, follow me. Where are we? What is the name of what we are doing? I do not know. The mission is follow me. The question is, do you trust the person who is leading you? If you do, then follow. Are we together? So there are many people right now whose destinies are full of fear and the reason is because we always want to be in control of things before we move unfortunately one of the assignments of the holy spirit when you begin your work with god listen carefully when you begin your work with god the holy spirit cuts you away are we together from that sense of self-confidence wanting to know the details before you follow and there are many ways that God achieves that. Let me tell you the truth. There are times in your walk with God, God can ask you to come out of the room. And you are not sure whether it's him or not. You can come out and stand expecting something to happen. You stand after 10, 20 minutes, he will say, go back and sleep. And that's the end of it. What was the goal of that thing? It's a training. It's not about something that will happen. We usually, okay, now that I obeyed you, what is the reward immediately? No. I'm training you to depend on me even when you do not understand me. Are we together now? Because you will be learning now that kingdom leadership is a derivative of your experience with God. If you do not have a rich experience with God, you cannot lead people to be able to fulfill the purposes of God for their lives. You have to know how God works with men. To be able to know how to help men work with god did you get what i said you need to know as a leader how god works with men then you can guide men to know how to work with god if you are in ignorance as to how god works with men the economy of god with men then you will not be able to lead people. The people you lead will not be a spiritual people. And that will have nothing to do with whether you are a good person or bad person. It's just ignorance of the ways of God. As leaders, whether you want to be, or you are in business, or you are a preacher on the pulpit, or you are a family man, or you are a captain of industry, an academician, it does not matter the geography of your witness you will hear me say the training is usually and largely the same especially at the initial point when god begins the training of an apostle a prophet a professor a businessman someone who is a potential politician in fact in many cases all of them start together as friends and they do not even know what they will become so the initial point of the training is the same he will submit all of them to the supremacy of god's word and to the ministry of the holy spirit it is as they progress he now begins to diverge them to the various dimensions that represent their core areas are we together now 
you would find out that one who is given to the apostolic and the prophetic as they grow in prayer and the word of god and the ministry of the holy spirit one will seem to be in a greater sense inclined towards the matters of prayer and consecration and the secret place not even knowing what is drawing him to that unusual experience it is god distributing them one person becomes he cultivates an unusual appetite for knowledge not just the knowledge of the word but even the knowledge of the systems and he does not know why this is why it is dangerous listen carefully it is dangerous to create doctrines out of your personal experience how god builds you is not the only way he builds how god builds you is not the only way he builds it is just your experience of how he builds if i subject everyone to my personal spiritual training i will only produce apostles you see that now but that would be a dangerous thing for those sent to business that would be a dangerous thing for those sent to politics because my unique training was given to mold me to become what i am and i'm becoming right now so you can glean from it but more than my experience i must submit you to the word of god because it does not matter what you are becoming the manual that will make you is still the same so in my mentoring you to become I must lay emphasis on the integrity of the word more than my unique experience are we learning now by the time I become so emotionally connected to my spiritual experience I will mold you to become something that you are not comfortable with I will be happy because it's convenient for me based on what God has called me to do there are many people today who are victims of the unique training of leaders a businessman for instance who is mentoring somebody who will become an apostle will most likely frustrate that young man do you know why because that man will be given to learning the wisdom of egypt and learning all kinds of things but this guy called into the apostolic and the prophetic he can receive an instruction to go and fast for 40 days and respectfully speaking it may not make sense to the businessman because the businessman has been trained to understand the value of time he has been trained by god to understand the value of negotiations and the place of wisdom and the person says listen this time you are wasting you are just lying down and saying god speak to me you will be poor and your children will beg for will beg for bread and he does not understand that it is a unique training that is producing a kind of person are we together now yes so the gentleman to honor the businessman mentor will give up on his apostolic and prophetic training and he will find out that even though he has an apostolic call the man he's becoming is just a businessman and that is not wrong if that were the call based on this revelation that i i prefer to expose people to the ministry of scripture communicating doctrine doctrine is how god makes people my personal experience comes with the limitation of my call but there are many other dimensions that may not be captured in my experience this is very powerful i'm saying this especially for parents too because there are times that respectfully speaking parents can lead children and the only way you know that god leads is not the only way he leads many people today have aborted destiny because of loyalty to the templates they were given eli thank god for how god used you but be sensitive to what god is doing with samuel god is raising him in a way you have not known before so make sure you guide him and encourage him not discourage him just because it does not look like your training does not mean it is not god doing it <laughs> hallelujah are we together let's talk about our experience with god there is no spiritual leader by spiritual there i don't mean church leader there is no spiritual leader who will be able to be effective in this end time without having 
a strong experience with God. Hallelujah. Very, very important. Where we shared yesterday, the Bible says for us, that should be Second, Second Chronicles chapter 26, I believe. We read verse 5 and then we went to verse 15. But let's look at verse 5, I believe. Talking about Uzziah, it says, as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. His prosperity and his excelling was a product of his passionate press for the things of God. Please look at me. It does not matter what God has called you to become. And it does not matter what area of leadership. Let me submit to you. Your longevity in leadership and influence will be proportional to the depth of your knowledge of God the depth of your work with God that is the reason why in order of priority before God begins to expose you to the matters of purpose the assignment is follow me not follow it when God calls a man the next thing he does is not to reveal to you where you are going he reveals himself first are we together now it is dangerous to come to God and then leave God and start following and pursuing purpose. Notice the pattern that he gave the apostles who would later become the initial leaders of the church. He called all of them from their various, you know, vocations. And he said, follow me and I will make you. That's their lives seemed wrecked and frustrated to a point where they had to open up and say, listen, we have to confront you on this. We have left everything to follow you. What is the need for us? Because this, your training does not make sense to us. We were successful people before you called us. Right now, we've left fishing. We've left everything. Remember when Jesus died, they were angry because they felt scammed. And in John 21, Peter said, I go a fishing. Let me go back to what I was doing. The disciples said, we go back with you. When he met Jesus Christ, that was why when he saw that it was Jesus Christ, he said, go away from me. I'm a sinner. I've done something. I didn't know you would come back for me. I didn't know there was value in seeking and knowing you. Listen, the reason why God insists that we have an experience with him before he lifts us, huh, is because for every dimension of glory and influence, please listen, there are battles there are dynamics of living in every realm of leadership and growth that if you do not have a rich experience with God, you will not last. Hallelujah. There are certain enemies that you have no business knowing about until you attain certain heights in life. So before you get there, God prepares you. Do you know? It is because of this inability to be properly prepared that God himself impedes the growth of certain people. It's not the devil stopping the growth of certain people. God, by his mercy, he vets you and looks at your spiritual energy and capacity and says, no, I cannot give you this kind of membership. I cannot give you this kind of influence because I love you too much to expose you to a realm where you do not have the stamina to stand and remain. Hear me, please. If you are Elijah, make sure you know God enough to not allow the pride of Jezebel intimidate you. Because for every mantle of Elijah, there is the challenge of Jezebel looking for you. If you are Samson, make sure you have the strength to resist Delilah before. Don't wait until you become a champion. Because Delilah only looks for Samson. Delilah does not look for Joseph. Mm -mm. So, there are demons assigned to mantles, not people. Listen, listen, listen. There are spirits that have no, they don't want to know your name. They just look for whoever is carrying this mantle. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There are spirits assigned over Enugu State. There is a level of wealth that if you ever attain it, you activate the operation of those spirits. They don't look for you because of you. They don't care who you are. They only care for whoever. Because anybody that attains that level of influence, the realm of the spirit knows the impact you can have as far as God's purposes are concerned. You're a music artist. There are spirits that are sent to derail people at several levels. 
so you may see someone fighting a battle and say oh dear these people are not serious it's because you've not risen you don't know the one assigned you have not picked your mantle and you are not walking that is why that's why many times please hear me when you find out that you are praying and you are loving god yet some doors are not opening stop binding and casting ask lord what are you doing what level of equipping do i need to go through Becoming great and becoming successful is the easiest part of success. Maintaining it and staying there. The ability to retain your honor. Please listen carefully. I hope God is blessing you already. Oh God, I pray that you grant me. The whole world must hear my voice. I can't be quiet. Lord, you, you took me from a family with nobody in the name of Jesus Christ. Everybody must hear my voice. <sighs> All right? Good prayer. Then there is a scan over your spiritual life in the realm of the spirit. And it's like a shrub trying to carry mango fruits. You know a shrub? And yet the kind of fruit it wants to carry is mango. The, the fruit alone is what will kill the shrub. God, give me global visibility. And yet you were crying simply because somebody told you you were stupid. <laughs> Lord, my business must be number one in Enugu. Are you ready for the attacks? And the antagonism that comes with influence are you prepared for it i hope you are learning go and read about people in the bible that's why god gave us a bible let me take a few for you and then you will learn the bible talks about a young man called joseph innocent young man this gentleman goes to bed and then he has a dream in the dream you know um, he sees the Sun moon and the 11 stars bowing to him he gets up innocently maybe a morning devotion I can imagine the father is there the mother and the brothers remember they were not friends they were brothers say brothers and then he shares his dream daddy I have something to say I slept and I saw the Sun moon and 11 stars bowing to me the brothers did not seem to react there immediately but something was about to come that the gentleman was not prepared for. Then the father now out of love for him gives him a coat of many colors. And the brother said, we've had enough. Can you imagine for brothers to come together and plan over their brother, not an enemy. And say, you know what? We are going to kill this person. And they threw him in a well. And carried the coat, spilled it with blood and went to tell the father. That a wild beast had killed him imagine that kind of thing imagine daniel it's in your bible ladies and gentlemen that on account of the excelling of daniel as a politician some people came together and said listen we need to do something about this man and the bible says they searched as far as his duties are concerned they did not find anything what a man and they said, what, 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 what area are we going to trap him in? And they found out his covenant of prayer. They said, fine, we will angle it through politics. You would think they were just political people determined to make sure that Babylon were a safe place. They literally changed the policy in the parliament because they were looking for one man. Finally, they get him. And then, even though the king liked him, he had to submit to the principles, the laws of the land. They threw him in a lion's den. Do you know? Please look up. I'm not sure Daniel's, Daniel's first prayer would be for safety from the lions. His first prayer would be avoidance of that effect, that thing. Are we together? That means he's going to say, Lord, show up so that I don't even get to the lion's den in the first place. No way. I confess positively me and the lions i have no covenant with them i'm a man of prayer and the more he's praying the more he's getting to the den i can imagine what happened when they threw him there what happens when your prayer keeps moving you towards what you are praying against 
it's in your bible there are times that your prayer does not move you away from what you are praying for <laughs> or praying against it moves you towards this man was a man of prayer the bible tells us that there was no fault in him so you can't say you were suffering the consequence of anything and yet his prayer life kept leading him until finally he got there but that was a price that was needed for his exaltation so be careful sometimes what you are asking for is not answered not because god didn't hear he knew that you are not number one you are not serious and number two you are not even in a position sincerely it will be wickedness for god to make that prayer come to pass because you are clearly not prepared for it do you know what it meant for jesus christ himself to start renegotiating salvation i love the bible it does not hide anything jesus your jesus says father if it be thy will you thought because he was the word incarnate he would be so invincible against trouble no jesus's vulnerability was clearly recorded in the bible he said listen can't we negotiate this do i have to die let me remind you my father that you are still god there is still another way but he just remember now this is the way of the spiritual man think after talking nicely to god like that he will say look you just touched me okay you will not die he still died he still <laughs> you asked me to talk to leaders listen more than it does not cost god anything this i have learned from scripture and learned from my life believe me when i tell you it does not cost god anything to give you all the things you are praying for but you see the all-seeing eye of god sees both the results you are getting and the trouble the effects you are in the world of men this is what you need to understand the bible says the highest heavens belong to the lord but the earth has he given to the children of men that means all the things that plague men including jealousy including envy bitter envy even unto death still resides within your domain that is why when god wants to raise you to be a great leader the first thing he gives you is not the grace and the mantle for purpose the first thing he gives you is the gift of himself you must have a deep enough experience with God. So there are times that you will see God training a businessman as if he's going to become an apostle. And the man is saying, God, but it's his business now. You are saying, it's just my own, is just money. And God says, you better fast. You better fast because it's not about buying and selling. You are going to be confronting spirits. You will need that prophetic grace to know when to negotiate which business everything even darkness from afar looks like light say an experience with god many leaders are more focused about the technical skills of leadership many leaders are more focused on the value that they provide and there's nothing wrong with that many leaders are more focused on their influence and the loyalty of the people they lead but in order of priority for you to be an effective leader in ministry in business and to have any kind of sustainable kingdom influence that lasts please hear me the first port of call is your experience with God do you know God enough do you know how he delivers from trouble don't learn it when you are in trouble learn it before the things that are written at four time your bible says they are written for our learning so that we through patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope i don't wait until the day i get into trouble and i say god how did you even say we come out of trouble no no way before you get there you begin to learn the dynamics in your knowledge of god i will call upon the lord who is deserving or worthy of praise he says so shall i be saved from my enemies that means i gather this as arsenals as i'm rising i expect some things to happen if someone looks at you and says you came to this office four years and they have made you an executive director 
over my dead body you don't go around and start panicking it's a proof of lack of thorough training if you learned and you were built by god you should already expect that this would happen and you should already have the plan to deal with it are we together there are people who had a greater sense of peace being poor than they were when they had money nobody disturbed you nobody lied to you nobody did anything and then you're praying and say father before the end of 2022 i must have my first hundred million i must have my first one billion and as you are saying it i'm sure the angels are just watching and saying goodness do you really what know what it takes to sit down on 100 million 1 billion of your money and be in Christ listen again in your mind to everything I said and be because you see for a 1 billion naira holder let's use naira 1 billion naira holder there are certain relationships you must maintain that are not godly did you hear what I said there are certain relationships you must maintain at that level of influence that are not godly. You have to master the dynamics of living as a sheep among wolves. There are, there are, there are. <laughs> Hear me. Let me tell you this. Even as a man of God rising in influence. You will be amazed at the proposals that will come around the world i submit to you i'm talking to leaders you cannot imagine the groups and the associations and the proposals that people have brought apostle there is this committee of so 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 across africa there is this one they are a group of global this and that and that and with all sense of joy i'm not stupid i'm intelligent enough to know what is demonic You cannot imagine the things I have rejected in my life as a price for remaining true with God. Now, this is not the part of many people's stories that you will hear. You just know that they are walking with God and God is lifting them. Let me tell you, there are times in your rising where loving God looks like foolishness. Because the amount of things you will lose, you will need to check and say, what else do I have? What else do I have left? Something more than gold I've got something more than gold Something more than gold I've got something more than gold If all I have is Jesus I've got something more than gold I will tell it to the world Jesus is Lord One of the deception of greatness is the presence of many material things. Material things have such jealousy, they will fight your loyalty for God. Let that car arrive and you will see how much your heart was connected to it. The moment the tire busts, you can't even pray until they fix the tire. The tire of that car. Remember, you rolled around when you were just taking a cab and said, Lord, everything to you. By the time you build a business and you hear that the stocks of your company are about to crash and God says, go and fast for five days. You will lie down and say, Lord, so is this how my company is going to go down? That is the reason why God tells you to eat for the journey is far. When he's subjecting you to fasting and prayer, listen, you don't know what it means to train six children or five children you may not have the time to fast for 21 days again so before the marriage comes he makes you to fast as if he, and you don't god what are you doing to me you are building stamina and energy for the days that are coming god by this teaching this morning is giving someone a definition as to what has been happening to you god i'm not seeing any result but you will say fast just when I'm done, you give me two weeks break. You say, start another one. Why is that so? Because you will be so busy. You will be so busy. There are, you will have to lean on your, the, 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 the,
the prayer bank that you have built for years the word bank you have built for years hear what the spirit of god is telling you you're not listening to a lecture yes sir mm. There are some of you because of the kind of wealth that God is going to be committing to you. The nature of your training will almost frustrate you. You will find out that you are wealthy. You are earning a salary of 200,000 and God can say so everything. You know why? Because compared to what is coming in the future, what you are saving is nonsense. God is using what you have to keep training you. Lord, what, what is this now? You told me to sow 200,000. And then my arrears just came. You are saying, so it again. It does not make sense. It will make sense when a billion dollars come. That training will make sense when you become a captain over conglomerate. And God will say, so for this mission field. You have been trained already. Listen now. God is training you to be a prophet. And in the process of knowing him, he will allow you to make certain mistakes deliberately. You will stand in the midst of people and say, who is John here? And there is nobody who is John. And truly, you believe that you had that name, John. It will sting your ego so that pride will die. The day that prophetic grace begins to work, you are no longer conscious of your reputation. Your awareness of obedience is greater than your validation. I tell you the truth treasure your scars they will be the anchors for your remaining in the future treasure your scars when we get to heaven today there is only one person who has the scar that is branded that calls him the Christ you will not know Jesus just by the crown on his head look at the hands of everybody and their feet there is only one who has that unique scar your scar can give you a place in destiny what you are ashamed of today will become your crown tomorrow yes sir i hope god is speaking to someone tonight listen most times when people come to me <laughs> you know i love people and when they come sincerely the first thing they want to do is to receive anointing and they kneel down and say i ask them what do you want some you know, four times the four but now that's that's how many portion now double portion is two double double portion now that's quadruple portion four and i look at them with love and compassion and mercy is this how you want to destroy yourself double portion elisha asked for double portion he did not know what he asked for look at how he died elijah did not die oh. elijah went to heaven but the one who asked for double portion did not master the law of life look at how he died sickness kept following him because it was dominion over death that took elijah to heaven and elisha asked for double portion he did not know the attack that was looking for him he died of sickness the bible tells us what killed him so for those who have been crying for three times the anointing of Elisha, show me the books you are reading. Show me the experience you are having with God. I want to walk in the healing anointing. Go and read about healing evangelists. Most of them did not live more than 80 years. Are we together? Because you see, the core area of your anointing is where satan attacks he sends spirits to make you a victim of your call this is how satan works if your call is unto healing and the rest you must master living in health and the administration of the life of god if your call is to bring people towards holiness and righteousness you must master the art of circumventing delilah there are people who follow certain anointings spirits is God giving us intelligence listen let me tell you by the privilege of God's grace 
I've had the honor of being with many fathers of faith in this nation. And when I have the privilege of talking with them, more than the things they are saying, I am observing. Observing. I can tell you that they have such a deep experience with God. Deeper than most people know. What we do on stage only accounts for 30% of ministry. I hope you know that. A major part of your life must be behind the veil. That is what strengthens what you do in the presence of people here. I've had the honor of meeting very wealthy people, multi-millionaires in all kinds of currencies. And when I sit with them, especially some of them who are very, very wealthy and love God, my goodness, the level of consecration, some of the rules that God had to create in their own lives, you would think God were too strict, but that is exactly what kept them and is still keeping them. When you begin to walk with God, when you learn doctrine and you rise to a particular point, listen to me, let me tell you what God begins to do. God will begin to introduce unique rules based on the vulnerabilities he sees in your life. If he studies you and finds out that, look, it looks like you, your weakness is women. For instance, God is going to put a unique rule in your life that applies to only you in a way that if somebody looks at you, he will say, Kai, but God, this is unfair. God knows what he's stopping. And once you walk with that mold, you will find out that you will circumvent that weakness and you'll be able to be great. There are others, your weakness, you are a man of God. Even if a lady walks naked in front of you, it does not affect you. But if you see an envelope, even if you are passing and you see an envelope on the ground, you must pick it and check what is inside. Watch this. I know you are laughing, but pay attention. Are we together? Are we together? So God knows when the devil wants to destroy you, he can bring enemies in the name of members for only one year who are millionaires but carry within them the spirit of your destruction. If you have not gone through the school of the spirit that has purged you and broken you to a point where you lose an appetite for those things. So God can give you rules like you will not have more than four cars at any point in your life. Your wife will say, what kind of a husband are you? They gave us 10 cars. You gave away six. Why? And you say, I have a covenant with God. God told me I will at any given point, I will only have four cars. It is not a doctrine. It is a training. God has vetted you in the spirit and have found out that if you have more than that, that is, that is the gauge of your discipline. If it crosses that, it can do something to you. Is someone learning? There are people, no matter how they fast and pray, they will not be able to pack a stadium to talk to the people. The reason is because what will happen to you after that meeting, because of your low level of prayer, your low level of consecration, God will have to respect the allowance you have given him in your life. He will not expose you to battles that are beyond your level of spiritual preparation. Is this making sense to you? So the higher you want to rise, that's what I'm trying to say. You must have a deep and a rich experience with God. There are levels when you get to with God, it no longer becomes an emotional dealing. It is a covenant. There are certain things when you do with God, God will bring a sworn blessing upon you because you have gone this far. I swear by my name that in any good state, you will never beg for bread again to your children's children. You see, when you see people come with certain transgenerational blessings, they didn't come just by dancing around and say, God sent me. <clears throat> it was an experience with God. When Abraham took his child, only child, and placed that child, he actually was going to kill the child. In fact, he actually killed the child. Because when the child dies in your heart, he really died. Romans chapter 4 already tells us his contemplations. 
that Abraham planned to kill Isaac. Then when he's done, he'll say, I've obeyed you. Please raise my child back to life. Let me go back home with him because I don't know what to go and tell his mother. I know we easily say Abraham gave up Isaac. Women, mothers, do you know what? After waiting 25 years, honey, where are you? And the, the aides, they are not. All the aides too have gone home because they went with him. Abraham was already ready for his marriage to fail because if you are a woman if that kind of husband comes back let me see the hand that prepares the food for him and he says honey um, let's just kneel down and give God thanks in this our generation that is over before he even arrives you have to read the scripture with your mind too so you don't know what he was willing to lose as he carried Isaac do you know what it means it's a different thing that they murdered your son but that you killed him by yourself for the rest of your life you will not be normal again you will hear the voice of your son day and night even if it is after 100 years father what is this the, the people who would have killed abraham himself were the servants among those servants there will be loyalists of his wife somebody will say let's kill this man because we can't stand the shame of telling the wife that we escorted the husband we've not only lost our jobs we've lost our lives too let's kill him so that we all die here and abraham said it does not matter let's go and god was watching the first and only man that acted what he will be doing himself when he put abraham on that altar he lifted the knife with the tears in the son's eyes he still did not stop it was god who had to say stop my question is what if abraham did not know how to hear god let me repeat it again there must have been a tribal and see before he gave him that instruction there was a training on hearing god what if abraham the life of abraham and his son was at the mercy of a particular training that he went through jumping the school of the spirit is dangerous because something you are learning today is what will make another training tomorrow make sense what if abraham could not hear god and he finally killed isaac he would have written a book that god is a killer whereas god said stop the problem was his hearing the same way god told you in business stop but when god was training you to hear him you did not hear god told you have only three children you had the fourth one now the fourth one came with trouble because you did not hear we keep blaming god on many things but simply because we could not stay in the school of the spirit Please listen carefully. Yesterday, we spent we spent quite some hours in the airport before we came. They kept shifting the flight. I got up early in the morning, and while I was praying, I sent my airport people a I sent them a text. I said, I sense that we're going to travel in the afternoon. I've already had that sense and I kept seeing a plane in my vision and I saw the sun while the plane was going and I know this is not morning I said no 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 the flight is in place I already prepared my heart I said Lord whatever it is I give myself joy I stayed for five hours in the airport but I was already I had already prepared what to do so there was no disappointment because somewhere in my training he had taught me how to know when he is speaking there are many troubles you get into simply because you don't even know what god is doing are we together now there are times you are about to enter a car that would be the end of your life but because you rejected the training of discernment you are unable to know is this god or is this just my mind in these days leadership and exploit in the spirit will be at the mercy of your experience with god there is something that if you do not know about god will destroy you completely there are men of god who collected money that's what killed them 
money they should not collect somebody sincerely who came not knowing that that was the deception of jacob and esau and they gave their bet right without knowing and they collected 10 million naira that 10 million naira they collected was the beginning of their downfall but when you walk with god he will train you that as you rise not every gift is for your taking you must have the stamina and the discipline to say no to many good things just because it's good does not mean it is of god you must be trained to know it is not only evil you say no to there are many good things in your life if satan tries to use sin and evil to kill you and you escape he will use good things and kill you the most important thing is that you die doesn't matter with what he uses to kill you are we together my sister you never knew that your assignment is to marry a great man of god who is going to be blessing the world so as a young lady on campus god begins to deal with you in a certain way when a gentleman comes to you and says i like you god says let me not even hear that thing again go back and let's pray I say, god what are you doing with me you do not know that he's building capacity because the kind of life and destiny you are going to be part of requires a lot of stamina if you turn aside in the day of battle your strength is small. some of you god knew that you'll be a minister in nigeria you were hoping you would go abroad god said this is your place of assignment nigeria seems to be having problems you stay here this is where your assignment is other people are running god says you are not going anywhere this is your place of stay that was why he taught you on faith he took one year to teach you on faith and you were saying god what is it about faith he said no your kind of faith you don't know the obstacles that will be coming learn faith he would give you instructions to read the books of men of god on faith listen don't run away from the training of god it does not make sense while he's building you but you stay there for someone right now you are a leader you are a man of god but god has stopped you from starting a church god has stopped you from starting a fellowship all the people you started together with they have all kinds of ministerial platforms and you are just there to the point that people look at you and say ah, but there's wisdom you you have been serving for three five years why don't you start a little fellowship and sincerely you want to do that and god says no the reason is because there is something else he has prepared for you now you can force yourself out of the will of god he will honor you but you must be willing to bear the consequence are we together the man gordon lindsay gordon lindsay who who founded christ for the nations not christ for all nations christ for the nations for a long time in gordon lindsay's life he only kept partnering with people and ministries and people looked at him and said you're a very anointed man why don't you have your own platform you know and god would not let him for a long time he looked like a fool until god finally gave him the allowance and when he started christ for the nations he just spread around like wildfire please hear me great people end time leadership and end time ministry will not be based on skill alone end time leadership and end time ministry will not just be based on technical academic skills if you were in the days of noah i shared it the last time i was in enugu here if you were in the days of noah and the flood was coming whether you were a professor or you had a store or you had a container to import and export the rain that was coming was coming to sweep everybody there was only one skill that was needed you're hearing god and you're obeying him every time in human history something seems to happen that shows the superiority of a man's spiritual advantage as against any other advantage i know that we live in a world today where we over celebrate intellectualism i'm not against that intellectualism is wonderful there are times we celebrate all kinds of crowns and we make it look like even though you are not spiritual at least since you are intelligent it's still all right when that flood comes it is not business people who will survive 
when that flood comes imagine that you were in the days of noah and a flood was coming let's assume you just finished dedicating your shop and then the next day the flood will start you will not be spared simply because your mind thinks well the flood was going to sweep everything there was only one man who survived and he survived on the strength of his relationship for him to be able to build an ark of Gopher would tells you he was a skilled man that it took technical skills to make that happen but it took a spiritual foundation to get the instruction leaning on your technical skills alone leadership skills I'm not against it right submit yourself to all of that but please behind everything you do you must know that your experience with God it's very very important so as a CEO you sit down and when someone talks about the Lord Jesus mm -hmm. we're not talking spiritual things here we're talking business really find out how the earth was created the Bible tells us that the things that do appear came from the realm of the spirit so any other thing that must appear in your life must come from the realm of the spirit I can tell you the truth my life today the in order of priority, the richest advantage in my life is not anything physical. In fact, I don't trust things that are physical. The greatest advantage in my life today is my relationship and my experience with God. That is the commodity and the product that is worth dying for. No matter what else you lose, the honor that you have only comes because he was there and he's there the lifting that you have everything that happens in your life i would be foolish today to trade my experience with god for more ministerial doors trade my experience with god for more no 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 i will keep learning i learn leadership i train myself but not at the detriment of the word of god my first call in this leadership session go back to the place of your spiritual foundation i don't care what kind of business you do i don't care if you are an administrator you need to be able to build capacity a deep and a rich experience with god that will now give you the stamina to rise in your name we will rise I don't know you reign on no. it's in your name that we will rise I don't know you you may have heard me say it in my teachings that the Lord told me he said son if you will let men see me there is nothing I will not give you as at the time God told me that thing I didn't have anything oh, ladies and gentlemen nothing but I said even if you never give me anything my life is committed to revealing you do you love him more than your business don't just say yes because God likes this kind of questions he will test it do you love him if God asks you to shut your business for one month you know how much you make per day and God says for me shut it down and spend one month will you bind and cast that voice and say God cannot speak like this not after what he knows happened to me last year the jealousy of God demands that he becomes the epicenter of your Christian experience not one of the many important things please listen carefully God demands that he becomes the epicenter of your experience may God forgive me if I'm lying but I've searched my life huh? I do not know if there is anything in my life today that I cannot give God like I said it is by God's grace and mercy but as far as I know no. you won't believe how many things I've laid down to speak like this when you see God doing great things with men, 
remember this 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 minister's conference is to show you the inner workings of the results you see you don't just stand and say god's power is going to touch somebody you are not a herbalist even a herbalist go and ask them they have levels there are herbalists that are failures it doesn't mean that just because you are serving the devil you are successful it's still the same rule of, of consecration and depth herbalists are in levels there are those that that you go to and it will still not work because they don't even know the devil are we together now so just because it is satan you are serving does not guarantee results no you need to know the devil deep enough it still takes this relationship we're talking about i have searched and searched all the earth searched and searched all the earth and found that Baba Wani Kamaraka. I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth and found that Baba Wani Kamaraka. This song came to me early in the morning. I was in Cameroon and just worshiping the Lord very early in the morning, celebrating His greatness. And then this song came to my spirit. The Hausa part says there is no one like you. That's what it means. I have searched. It took a long search to come to the conclusion that no one is worth my life. So don't tell me why are you so fanatical. I searched. I'm, I, I, my loyalty to God is not in ignorance. I have options but I checked. He is my loving him is a conclusion now you understand that I have searched and searched all the earth searched and searched all the earth and found that Baba Wani Kamaraka I have searched and searched all the earth searched and searched all the earth and found that Guess what the chorus says Babuani Kamaraka Yajis Babuani Kamaraka Babuani Kamaraka I will love him in life and I will love him in death call me CEO I am still the lover of God call me a businessman I am still the lover of God call me an apostle and a prophet the noblest title you can give me is the lover of God for that is the realm where no eye has seen that is the realm where no ear has heard neither has it come into the comprehension of men what God has in store not for them that preach not for them that do business not even for them that pray the realm of lovers is the realm of, of a, 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 a height that you cannot understand yes. hear me this morning service came to turn you from a businessman to a lover of God from a man of God or a pastor to a lover of God if this is all I achieve and we're not able to touch any other thing within the time left it was a successful thing my assignment this morning or afternoon is not just to come and share with you leadership principles you belong to an excellent church don't tell me you are a CEO. Leave the issue of your container. Are you a lover of God? Leave the issue of your restaurant. Congratulations. Are you a lover of God? Leave the issue of the church that you have. For a minute, forget about your congregation and your desire to build your church and your desire for more land and your desire to find him. No, no, no. Throw all that away. I have searched and searched 
all the earth searched and searched all the earth and found that Babuani Kamaka. I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth and found that Babuani He said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Hear me? Most of us, as you are hearing me preach, you need to repent. Because most of us would prefer to be called the CEO of XYZ conglomerate than to be called the lover of God. It looks like an insult. What a demeaning title. Give me something more superior that gives me a standing among my peers. For instance, he owns five conglomerates. He owns this and that. He's a billionaire. He's an intelligent person. Noble descriptions. But nothing comes close to the realm of love. Because when everything failed, it was love that stood. When wisdom failed, love was still standing. Even when faith failed, love was still standing. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Your leadership will be an ineffective leadership. God will not even give you an opportunity to scale the heights of influence until he knows that you love him and you are passionately addicted and connected to him. If I ever give you any secret about my life and the privilege of the bits that God is doing with this man, this is it here. It is beyond the realm of prayer. It is beyond the realm of fasting. It is beyond the realm of Bible study. Go and ask God how much I love him and you will know why he does what he does. Now please listen. When the first lady is not around here, but yesterday, when your pastor finished introducing anybody, everybody, even though she's far away, thousands of kilometers, he still took the time to... Not even the man of God who came to preach made him forget his wife. Not even the dignitaries that came made him to forget his wife. He had to honor her and you celebrated her. There are some people, eh? It doesn't matter where they are the jealousy of God keeps trailing them like a shadow because of the depth of their love for him so while they are sleeping someone is planning that this man and his children they should not live to survive the end of 2022 God will not even allow you start praying about it he takes that issue personal who did you say you want to kill did the Bible not say jealousy is the rage of a man? You want to know how angry a man can be, you touch his wife. Most of us have not been able to secure the jealousy of heaven because your love for God is still in question. Can I tell you? Only God knows the arrows that fly by day against some of us. The noisome pestilence. It is only when we get to heaven we will know the amount of things we have eaten that are poisons that should have killed us. No matter how intelligent you are, we see impact. As far as the world of men is concerned, when men want to get you, only God can save you. So if you are standing, it's because there's something about your love. Listen to me. Any container that replaces God in your life is an idol. I don't care if it's Bibles that are inside. Anything that replaces God, your business, the things you are importing and exporting, the restaurants that you have, the leadership, man of God. Do you know church can become an idol? Don't think just because it's a spiritual venture. Church can become an idol. You don't care whether God is there or not. Your relationship with God can go places provided the, the religiosity of the activity is there. Do you love him? Don't think God is wasting your time this morning. Do you love him? Many of you have given your heart to people of lesser honor. You gave your heart freely for people whose lives you did not even verify. And here is someone who has assured you that he loves you. 
and you are still asking questions can i trust you with my heart please hear me there are realms of increase there are realms of finances i wish sometimes my heart boils to want to give a few testimonies but sometimes even when i give them i listen to the message i still feel guilty again i say i shouldn't have said that i should have just preached i cannot begin to tell you the things that god has done in this life purely a love affair when a man buys something and takes to his wife it's not her birthday it's not any anniversary it's not whatever he just buys a car and gives his wife and she says my husband what is this for he said thank you for being my wife you can stand in anger and say but this is not fair well that's the blessing of taking the risk to be his wife so when you see a man love the lord like a faithful bride don't say why is god blessing this person i can't remember him praying over this thing why did god still answer because in the realm of lovers anything is allowed god can take a man's prayer request of 10 years and give you you can see a man hosting dimensions of grace and glory that does not seem to match your knowledge of him it is the lover who gave him not just the giver a giver can give but when a lover gives he gives to reflect his love are we together I can give you 10 naira as a giver but when a husband gives to his wife he does not give sparing because the gift is supposed to communicate how much he loves her after this meeting you see some of you will go back and the things God begins to do in your life in addition to what you learned yesterday People will ask you and say, come, what is it about you? Tell them you want to know why God does the things that he does. Find out my love for him. Don't just find out my service for him. Find out my love. Not just my money. Not just the things that I do. My love for him. I've seen what God can do. Look, I have a lot of this, my wonderful children. And both in Abuja and then Zaria and sometimes when I travel and I'm with them after service that's when their own church starts all the jumping they pray in tongues and do whatever as soon as they say the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ they are lining up and waiting to hug me and when they come to hug me they don't care whether I'm tired they don't care whether I've preached that is their own service and they hug and sometimes they ask me to bring my ears down can you imagine that that's the implication of love I bring my ears down and they tell me I want bicycle or with confidence or my birthdays next week sometimes they write me letters they mix all kinds of English and force me to read it that that is how far love can go so two of you can do the same thing it will look like God spares one and the other one is still remaining there because love created exemption for another please hear me return back to your love life any business any church any ministry some of you may need to shut down a few ministrations and say thank god for all the invites church is growing but i need to shut down a bit and spend that time with him and say the lover of my soul i am still here that boy you carried is still there I know today they call me daddy, they call me emoji, they call me prophet, they call me apostle, they call me evangelist, but I have come to you. And God says, you still remember, even after all this lifting, prepare for the next level. I just described myself for you, prepare for the next level, so that when you think you have exhausted these people, oh, they've tried, you see a new layer of glory and grace and signed upon their life will be the lover of their soul hallelujah we are going to pray i have about 20 minutes i will talk about something within that 20 minutes we are going to judiciously use our time but for the next three or four minutes you are going to cry whether you want to go on your knees whether you want to do whatever you are going to say lord forgive me if I'm to be sincere 
I know that certain things have replaced you. It may not be that you are bad. I'm not, this is not a call to condemnation. It's a call to repentance, to say, Lord, you don't have to go on your knees, or what, but whatever position is comfortable, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Adonai Lamb of God You are worthy Worthy of my praise King of kings Lord of lords Let your kingdom reign In my life And I lift my voice to worship you, oh my soul rejoice, take joy my King, in what you hear, help me. I return I don't know when the passion for ministry took your place I didn't even realize that this is how far I veered off ah cry 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 belong to you total surrender my heart my life my everything you're not wasting your time man of God this is the secret to genuine power more than just principles your experience with God for some of you you need to repent you have been distracted you veered off looking for many things
minutes we are praying there is a work of purging that God is doing in someone's life purging God is purging God is purging how I love to stand for you how I love to worship you keep praying and even though it hurts me for every step I take and even though it pains me for every move I make but I love you I can never ever do without you I love you I can never ever do without you I'm giving you a piece of my secret place. Let the fire 
out from your altar, touch my body, take my breath. My altar is calling you. You're not wasting your time. My altar, Shaladagadiyada. My worship. Calling you, my destiny is calling you. Shala na maseta liada, e na manase na malasiada. Shale na masabrana na magada baliada balaka soda baliada. E la masene masana na prada gada balada bagada balada na bosiada bada. Shene masade bana de na 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 she la baria takata araba na masana magada baliada balada bagada bala se na balana masadia ta. That was a cry of Isaiah. Let the fire from your altar touch. Purify everything that is not of God. Let the fire from your altar touch. Let the fire from your altar touch. While you are worshipping God is sorting your business While you are worshipping God is arranging things for you While you are worshipping God is arranging the people who will come and sow the land for the church Forget about the sorrow Go ahead, something is happening here Lifted up, I will sing your praise. My hands lifted up, I will worship you. You've taken the pain and the sorrow away. You've given me peace, undeniable. There's no need to cry, cause you're always with me. You're my father, my everything. Oh, Lord, you took my pain away and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice. Come on, sing to him. Yeah. Yeah. Command a restoration of your passion for God. A restoration of your passion. For some of you, after this conference, you will start your own retreat with God. Because God is calling you. You may need to shut down 
even in the secular we have public holidays where you shut down things so that you can face family or honor a national day or whatever it is God is calling you man of God by now you would have been a mighty prophet by now your business would have gone around the world but you have been searching for every other thing and you ignore the lover of your soul get back to the place of the altar leave me at the altar with my father leave me at the altar with my father leave me at the altar with my father listen you see until you understand the place of genuine love it is the one secret I found and when I found it it was a master secret love oh I love him I love him I love him I can tell you that you want to see God prosper you second Chronicles 26 5 for as long as he sought the Lord, the Lord made him. You can try to make yourself vain is the help of man. The Lord made him to be the leading man of God within his city. The Lord made him, the Lord made her, the Lord made your products. That all of a sudden within one month, your product is what is being patronized all over Enugu. And people are saying by what means? A covenant happen if if a gentleman comes here right now and by evening he returns back and tells you he's a billionaire you will not tell him what did you do you will say where did you go because this kind of wealth is not about what you have done again there there has to be a covenant that has produced this kind of speed we're talking of soaring some of you have lingered too long that is where anger and jealousy and pain and petty things come from. You can allow the lover to lift you. And you will find yourself soaring in dimensions you never imagined. This is my life. Sit down for five minutes. Let me introduce something to you and then we'll wrap up. Just leave those under the anointing. Leave them to have their time with God. The conference is like a retreat for some of you. Yes. Help us to love you. Help us to live for you. May we never match you with business may we never match you with church no. may we never match you with anointing prayer is not God prayer is only there because there is God fasting is not God fasting is only necessary because there is God Bible study is not God God is not a page he's alive all and everything points to him and when your life fails and ceases to point to him, you are then in trouble. Let me introduce just one more concept. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20. I touch on this and we're done. I spoke about the depth and the richness of your experience with God Proverbs 13 13 and verse 20 just one last word 13 and 20 please give it to us 1 3 and 2 0 Proverbs 13 and verse 20 let's read together if you can see it ready one to read he that walketh with wise men shall be wise but a companion of fools shall be destroyed please read it one more time he that walketh with wise men shall be wise but a companion of fools 
the bible tells us very clearly from psalm 115 and verse 16 i believe psalm 115 and verse 16 it says the highest heavens or the heaven of heavens belong to the lord but the earth has he given to the children of men that means when it has to do with functioning in the earth the cosmos this is the world of men even though owned by god listen carefully if you do not understand this your leadership will fail i just needed to introduce this even though the earth is the lord's listen carefully the steward of the earth is man the owner of the earth is the lord's that means for you to excel in life you must know both the owner and the steward are we together now yes most of us here rent houses and usually you don't have the privilege of seeing the owner or knowing the owner except in a few instances there usually is someone between the owner and the tenant called the caretaker is that true and the caretaker has been mandated by the owner to protect his interest as far as that business is concerned am i correct on that so it is the 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 caretaker who does all the negotiations the paperwork and whatever it is and the overseas and then there is a care that the earth that we function in belongs to the Lord, Psalm 24. But Psalm 115 is saying the stewardship of the earth is in the hands of man. That means whatever happens in the earth is not a reflection of the power of God. It's a reflection of the faithful stewardship or the mismanagement of that caretaker. If you do not have this wisdom understanding about the cosmos, you can be spiritual and you will still fail. This world is the world of men. Hallelujah. When God put man in the garden, he gave him stewardship. And even when he saw him failing, he still honored his decision. That is how faithful God is. That means it is possible for God to speak excellent things over your life, your church, your business, your state. And yet you do not see God manifest on that wise because we do not understand the dynamics of excelling in the cosmos. Every time I talk to leaders, if I have one thing to teach them is this understanding of men. Yesterday we began to discuss and our time is gone so I'm just going to touch it and then we're done. On being helped by God and I did teach you that there are three expressions of the help of God. Number one is the ministry of mercy. Number two is the gift of man. That means every time God wants to help an individual and help a leader, he introduces you to man. The Bible says, what is man that thou art mindful of? not the son of man that thou visitest him you find that in psalm 8 it says for thou has made him lower than elohim you have crowned him with glory and honor to psalm 8 and it says you have set him over the works of hands and in doing so you did not leave anything that was not under his feet you have to appreciate that mankind listen carefully the human species is the zenith of god's creation that means God bound himself with a covenant that every time he has to function in the earth, he will need a man to walk in partnership with him. He can do without a man, but he has so chosen by his predeterminate counsel to not walk outside of men. So, the world is the world of men. I don't have time, I would have described for you the condition to be a man because to be a man you first have to be a spirit if you are not a spirit you cannot be a man are we together now every man is first a spirit but a spirit alone cannot be called man you have to be a spirit that is hosted in a physical body there are all kinds of bodies but the only body that makes an individual to be called man is a physical body. And then midwifing that spirit and that body is your mental faculty. Okay. Thank you. Are we together now? Yes. So 
there are many spirits angels cannot be called men they are spirits but they do not have our bodies with us our our configuration is not given to them animals have physical bodies but they do not have spirits you cannot call animals men you need to understand who god gave the earth to god did not give the earth to goats or whatever it is water is physical but you cannot call water man even though water moves like man you can hear the sound like man so when it has to do with excelling in the earth if you understand your business and you do not understand men you will fail the first product you need to understand is man second only to your understanding of god the moment you understand god as far as leadership and influence and excellence is concerned you must understand man every trouble on earth today came because of man the salvation that we have received came from a man the man called jesus hmm. are we together the one who purchased salvation for us he did not purchase salvation as a spirit no he had to become a man to come and die as a man man and is today seated at the right hand of the father as a man the reason why we know jesus is coming is because he left with his body he doesn't need another body to return the assurance of his coming is because when he left he left with his body so he has satisfied the condition that still gives him allowance into the world of men the first time he could not just come because he never had a physical body so he needed to go through the labor of finding a virgin waiting for a virgin and then you know being incubated in a stomach for nine months but this time around he can come anytime because he does not need a body again now watch this everything that happens on earth happens through men you may have heard me teach that all blessings come from God through men to men all troubles come from Satan through men to men because of the presence of men societies are destroyed because of the presence of men evangelism happens because of the presence of men leadership happens territorially speaking because of the presence of men the reason why some nations are called third world and others are called first world is because of men it's not the seas that make them first world or or whatever it is the battle on earth today is for the hearts and the minds of men i hope you know the battle on earth is not for gold the battle on earth is not for oil listen the battle on earth is not even for territory the greatest battle on earth is who captures the hearts and the minds of men the reason why your bank is functioning right now is because of men the reason why you want to build a business right now is because there are men in enugu if you leave enugu with goats alone and you are the only human being even if the banks and the oils and everything are left you cannot do business are you seeing that everything literally happens because of men isn't it interesting that everything happens because of men and yet most people learn every other thing but man they do not know about men but they know about business they open a school why are you opening schools because you know people will keep giving birth and their children will go to school your business literally is founded on that philosophy that the presence of men guarantees the continuity of your business some of you who have stores here if alone because there are humans and even when you cut the hair it will still grow back you cut it you literally build a business around that information why does your rest of men it is men that eat the meal and they will go to the toilet and then return back again so if they buy your pack your bag of rice today you tell him see you next time that statement is predicated on the information that you are a man there is something about you 
that my business is built upon imagine if we ate once and never had to eat again farming will be useless manufacturing will be useless production will be useless it is because you know that someday this cloth i am wearing is going to go through wear and tear you literally based on that information you built a business around it in one word business is the ministry of men listen carefully please don't think i don't know what i'm saying business is not the ministry of bottles business is not the ministry of containers business is not the ministry of cars business is not the ministry of schools business is the ministry of men every other product that you call business is only a midwife the final consumer is a man so if you know your product and you do not know the man the reason why you clean your chairs very early in the morning those who clean this beautiful church when you came here early in the morning probably there was no one or maybe a few people and yet you had the confidence to set the stage because you knew that men will come imagine if you saw cows just coming maybe 30 of them would you say you are welcome god bless you find a place to sit no cows are physical things but that's not what you are looking for men any leader who does not understand men is going to fail as a pastor as a businessman the reason why most of us do not excel in our influence and our leadership is because we took our time to study any other thing and every other thing and we ignored men the zenith of god's creation if god is going to lift you it will come through men relationships are the most expensive commodities on earth relation expensive people will pride and say i'm using a a rolex watch i bought it five million naira and look at it has diamond crested in it and yet they do not know that relationships are of inestimable value you are i always pray for my people and let me extend that prayer for you may you never be so poor that the only thing you have is money may you never be so poor that the only thing you have is money because if the only thing you have are notes in your house you are not wealthy the real honor of a man is not in his acquisitions the bible says it means your relationships represent the highest index of your wealth the degree to which you are connected to strategic relationships that provide a leverage to your destiny is the measure of your wealth. Money only comes to you through relationships. It will take a hand exchanging to bring wealth to you. Now, please listen. If you do not understand this, you will fail in life. Destiny fulfillment is impossible without relationships. I am here right now in this lovely church because of a relationship. A relationship that started in Nairobi Kenya but has been maintained so greatly relationships as busy as I am there are people who if they demand my attention I will respond almost instantly because of the power of relationships there are people today who did not have to do much in terms of business they invested diligently in their relationships and their relation they did not even start as business people they started as wise people because they worked with the wise and the end of their pursuit was a business and influence politicians understand this you find out somebody who never had the intention to be a governor or a senator he only followed wise people and as he followed wise people he started evolving to a version of himself that you now call a leader jesus said follow me and i will make you he never gave them any promise that you'll be called apostles he never gave them any promise that you'll be miracle workers he said follow me and i will make you through that relationship he produced those we call apostles who turned the world upside down listen to me relationships are currencies they can buy anything money can buy anything money can buy relationships can buy the easiest way to succeed in life 
is through relationships and destiny connections. You may have heard me say it in my teaching that who hates you does not matter, but who likes you matters. Truly, who likes you matters. There are people who can make things happen for others because of the strength of relationships. I know people who got jobs after praying for jobs for three, five, six years in less than one hour, one relationship brought the job for them. I know people who got land to build a church. There is no true story of success that is not connected to relationships. The anointing that a man receives in his life is based on relationships. We just graduated our school of ministry students on Sunday, glorious program. And while I was praying for these people, I was looking at them and my heart reached for compassion. I said, look at what relationships can do. There are people who have no business being wealthy, except that they were around wealthy people and it became unfair for them to remain in that state. There are people who had no business being anointed, but they were around anointed people and it became unfair for them to remain at that level. If I see where you are, it is a reflection of your relationships. He that walks with the wise shall be wise himself, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. The man does not want to be destroyed, but he's associated with people who are vulnerable to destruction. And the end of it is that person is destroyed himself. He that walks with the wealthy shall be wealthy. He that walks with the anointed shall be anointed. He that walks with intelligent people shall be intelligent. He that walks with the godly shall be godly. That means anything you want to become, find those who already are. That is your chance of becoming it. You want to become a man of God doing ministry with the dignity of kingdom integrity? You cannot have that hanging around people who compromise is like their second name. They don't have any regard for other and spiritual things. You want to become someone of character, a great leader and a visionary man. There are people who are great people, but all their friends are drunkards. All their friends are unserious people. And then they say, it doesn't matter, I'm not like them yet. You are not like them yet. You are on your way becoming. A child does not know he's a child till he becomes an adult. It's when the child becomes an adult, he says, oh, I once was a child. So the drunkard does not know he's becoming a drunkard till he turns later on and finds out that, oh, I'm only doing five now. Listen to me. Most people have not learned the power of protecting their destinies by surrounding themselves with quality, godly people. You may have heard me say in my teachings, if there are five foolish people around you, you didn't count well, there are six. If there are five prayer warriors around you, you did not count well, there are six. If there are five visionary people around you, you did not count well, there are six. You are always a reflection of the company that you keep. Even in business, come on, I'm in the East here and you know, there are times that you pass a street that sell electronics. There are 10 shops all selling the same thing and you would think because of the presence of one, they will fail and yet they will all succeed because sometimes you will not find a product in one place and the other one will lead you to another shop where you will get it and he's still happy that you got it because you will come back for their sake. Please hear me. Leaders, if you are to live a qualitative destiny in this end time, go ahead to begin to select quality people. You must understand the power of men and how to relate with men. If you do so, if you do not understand relationships, you can be anointed and you will be surprised that your work will remain small. Businessman, you may never be able to scale heights and go global. It takes more than being anointed. The gift of men is one of the ways that God helps men to soar. Are we together? There are many things you need to know about men. 
you need to understand the vulnerabilities of men you need to understand the inconsistencies of men you need to also understand the different kinds of men we have in our world you have to understand the kinds of relationships that are available for instance there are general relationships the Bible mandates that we treat everyone with love and caution. You go out in the morning and you meet people. General relationships. There are seasonal relationships. Relationships that come to your life for a season. The key to maximizing those relationships is discernment. To receive what they have to deliver to you fast before their expiry time. Then there are covenant or destiny relationships. These are relationships that connect directly, not just to where you are going, but the final journey. No matter what you need to do, you have to protect those relationships. For instance, your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. It can be a general relationship. It can be a seasonal relationship. Your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is not even a covenant relationship. It is your life. That means whatever goes wrong in that relationship, you have to humble yourself and swallow your pride and press. Most people do not understand the power of relationships. We keep receiving prophetic words, but relationships destroy our potential for growth and scaling heights. I want to make a statement and then I wrap up. Our father, Dadio Nubogo, this great man is 83 84 do you know one time daddy traveled down to koinonia just to come and be four years old what is this man coming to do when he can follow online and not that it was any special program and i looked at this man and i said at this age relationships relationships are investments if you tell me today daddy is not feeling fine or something is wrong I can cancel a meeting to come and honor him for his health and don't say ah it's unfair no don't demand a level of my attention in a relationship you have not invested in you see oh dear there are many people who are demanding it is fraud to demand a returns from a, you can't put one naira and want one million no there are people that have not made any meaningful investment and contributions in their lives it would be unfair for me to demand certain levels of their time their resources their attention i have not made that kind of investment in their lives you can't give god 10 minutes and want a global ministry that 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 is unfair are we together now your pastor sometimes he travels down and we just come and worship and share fellowship and he leaves and i'm saying my god look at this there are things that people do in my life that make me become indebted to them there are times that people say oh apostle you've been we are trying to call you we cannot get you but so 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 person said they called and you answered i apologize it's not injustice it's called returns on investment Are we together now as a man of god while everybody is trying to look for you for anointing somebody is asking have you eaten are you okay is god helping you when that person is crying will you keep quiet if your business has not blessed anybody you didn't raise anybody yesterday reverend was talking about the dear woman of God who helped him and all the things that she did you can imagine if for any reason she needs help reverend would get up and say once it is within my power I will go all the way listen life is hard for many people because they have not received the gift of men you have not seen men as a gift are we together if you understand this there are heights somebody met me and he made a statement he said apostle you are a very strange man he said some of the biggest women conferences in this nation you are a man and then you are going there to go and speak to women invited by the highest authorities and i looked at them I said well go and ask god 
But one thing you can know that the women who invite me are not stupid. Hallelujah. I don't say that to brag, but isn't that strange what God can do? Every time you see unusual results, I can tell you among the many dynamics is the ministry of men. The ministry of men. The ministry of men. Some of you, there is nobody in your life today, right now, who can give you money. And don't mean a loan. You can just say, look, um, I, I think I need, I need to sort out something. You are in trouble, you are alone, except God shows you mercy. It is dangerous. You are living in a risk. Are we together? Who loves you right now? enough to say over my dead body to see this person cry have you impacted somebody's life that much for you to mean so much to them but today even if they go to be with the lord they will go rejoicing because the investments they have made in men has secured the destiny of their children to the third and to the fourth generation there are many people who will tell you what are you doing i'm in real estate what are you doing manufacturing what are you doing importation and export what are you doing maintaining relationships that is my stream of income not i'm not talking about myself alone it will take a foolish person to laugh at you and say ah you mean you are you kidding me that is an investment that does not fail it never fails because you get wealthier from capital appreciation as the person rises he will bless you to honor his perception of your relationship is someone learning now because there are many of you who can destroy men because of your products it does not matter I will push anybody it is my business you are about to crash land it takes the ministry of men when you see me honor the fathers when you see me love the people it's not from a selfish standpoint I love them sincerely but I know one recommendation from a man who loves you can open the next 10 years of your life and then one word of caution from a man of influence who has a problem with you can close a door that was once open some of you there are doors that are closed right now it's not demons that close them they were closed by men someone said be careful and that's it 20 ministrations closed because one person said be careful i can't vouch for him that's it you were in the process of a contract and they said listen five billion is involved here do you trust these people i said well i trust these two i can't speak for this and that's it by the next day you wake up after dancing and they tell you it will not work the problem was not your skill the problem was not your value the problem was that you ignored the ministry of men unbelievers understand what i'm teaching you unbelievers have mastered the art of building ladders through relationships you would hear me say it in my teachings that a man would travel from America to Nigeria to attend the birthday ceremony of a CEO's daughter who is two years old. Is she his friend? Please. Have you not seen people travel to attend weddings of certain people? You know a man who is busy, so busy he flew from Australia, America, to attend a, a, a birthday a, a wedding ceremony of a little girl or a little boy is more than that they are registering their investments i had the opportunity to pray one time for one of the governors when he became a governor you know the the thanksgiving service i was there to preach somewhere and then it happened that it was his thanksgiving service and i saw people who would never have come to church never not even near the gates of church they were there i said what are these people doing here christians muslims known herbalists known traditionalists i mean people were there and i said you see everybody understands this except the church that is the reason why we remain down lot if you are a righteous man and you are in the midst of unrighteous men you are still not safe your personal righteousness may not deliver you from sodom and gomorrah you will need abraham to come and help you are we together my charge for you therefore 
is you as you take inventory of the various things that you have begin to ask yourself how many useful relationships have i invested in in my life today that can provide a leverage some of you are in this church right now if you cry there is nobody who can answer because your attitude and your disposition towards men once people are not rich you don't have any business with them you continue that way you'll be in trouble I wish I had the time I would have taught you the culture of dealing with relationships. It is a principle I have mastered in my life. It is not all about anointing. Valuable relationships. Two keys to maintaining relationships. Number one is honor. Honor is the discerning, the celebrating and the appreciating of men for their uniqueness you cannot be able to maintain quality relationships that translate into an excelling life until you understand honor let me give you one last one number two the second key that you need to be able to maintain relationships is your value and your contribution no relationship will be committed to you indefinitely if you are not adding to it most of us are very parasitic in our relationships you only expect people to do things for you the moment you come you say i'm looking at you you've not done anything for me no nobody remembers those who take we only remember people who give edge the memory of your presence in the life of people by contributing whether it is your value your prayer there's a group of women who pray for me all the time. I will never forget them, no matter how busy I am. Because I love them, but because of the depth of their contribution to my life, I can't forget them. I remember the people who have added and continue to add to my life. There's no guarantee that I will remember everybody. Even in a church like this, you will find out that sometimes men of God seem to tilt towards others than others. It's not, it's not being unfair. They are tilting towards the area that provides them value if i know that you are valuable you are useful to my life as far as supporting what i represent is concerned i will place priority upon you one prayer father grant me the grace to receive the gift of men into my life to see men as an answered prayer not as a load go ahead and pray grant me the grace to receive the gift of men the Lord helps us by bringing to our lives the gift of men relationships are powerful they are irrefutable without men there is no business without men there is no ministry without men there is no rising in all your learning learn men in all your getting get men in all your investing invest in men in all your receiving receive the ministry of men in all your praying pray for men dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua salmon and that is i want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of jesus christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye